um, what inspired you to like open the restaurant in the first place? Hmm. Up in the industry, um, my mom worked in food service. My great grandmother ran a cafe into her seventies, which is wild to me, wow. yeah, especially considering the amount of energy it takes to get all of this done and time commitment and everything. She's just amazing, though. I'm not surprised that she did it. Uh, I don't know that I could do it, <laughs> um, but I always was in the industry, and I had a, a slightly different career path for a while, and it didn't end up working out. Um, I was a dancer professionally, and I pulled my knee, and so I had to stop dancing. It's totally okay. Um, you know, it closed one door and opened another, and I fell back into the industry, which I'd always sort of stayed in, um, and then was in management, and I had an opportunity to buy the restaurant when it was smaller um, and thought, why not? Let's do it. So that's cool. sort of inspiration. Family. Um, what age group tends to come in the most? Into the trails? Um, the, the demographic that dines here has really shifted recently. We used to be mainly retirees, um, you know, anywhere from 50s to 100. Literally. Uh, and that was our mainstay, and they are still our most loyal customer base. Um, but we've really seen the demographic shift, like, wildly to a younger um, age bracket. Everything from, like, this week, because of spring break, we've had a ton of high school um, age folks in here, and it's been fun. Like, there's a good energy around that. And then our 20 to 30 and 40 something demographic is as large, if not larger, than our retired demographic. Wow. So, because of the show, it had a different kind of reach and a different kind of marketing, and we were able to yeah. you know, draw this crowd. Plus, um, it looks hip and trendy now. So, <laughs> that's helpful. Yeah. Um, so, like, how has your Restaurant Impossible experience changed the way you do business? And, like, how has it affected your revenue? Uh, the Restaurant Impossible experience has changed my life. <laughs> From beginning to end, it's a completely different life now. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, more flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of laying off 17 people, we've now hired an additional 13. Wow. Um, we are able to pay all of our bills. We've actually paid off all of the back debt that we had, um, but not our debt service. Yeah. But that's being paid off regularly, and that's wonderful. So there's all these weights that are lifted, and I think the most important thing for me is that I've been able to hire a manager and bring on other people that we're able to delegate out to yeah. so that I have more quality time with my family. And that is, that's everything to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to leave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So, like, what has, like, what sparked your interest for creating the gluten-free menu? I mean, like, not a lot of restaurants, like, rarely any I've gone to have ever had a gluten-free section. Um, we decided to do gluten-free because the owner of Mountain Mike's harassed mm -hmm. into doing it. No. <laughs> Literally. Um, so Samuel, that's the owner of Mountain Mike's, his daughter is celiac, and uh, she'd never had breakfast out at any restaurant before because wow. it frankly just isn't very available. And he was starting to do his gluten-free pizza again and he said, hey Stacey, you know, why don't you do this? It's such a great opportunity for you. And Emily needs a place to meet up. <laughs> yeah. And um, after he harassed me for months, he's tireless. He's in the harassment mode. I mean, just amazingly tireless. Um, and a lot of research, I decided to do the menu and we kind of put it together. And, um, I'm just I'm so excited about it. And it's really opened up this whole other door for me um, around nutrition and health and things that I'd always kind of dappled in. Um, yeah. Now I'm really, really committed to them and committed to learning more about them and expressing them across the board in the menu and making sure that, you know, things that I'm doing to make sure that my family's eating healthy at home, we can offer to our guests as well. Okay. Yeah, because like I know two people at um, Hygiene High who actually cannot have pollution. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's actually uh, becoming epidemic in the United States. There's so many people that are undiagnosed or don't really realize that they're symptomatic um, because of the way we process our green and because of the way that people have been eating for the last four years. Um, we have you know, actually changed our, gen our genetic makeup um, to be intolerant to gluten. This is a crazy long story. Wow. Yeah, there's so much science into it. It's, it's really fascinating to me. I, like, I love it. That I'm so excited really that I'm fascinated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to learn more about it. And it, it plays into so many different components of health um, and cancer and that kind of thing. My husband was recently diagnosed with um, melanoma and 
So one of the things that we've been doing is making sure that we're changing you know, our eating habits at home and going towards um, just whole foods and nothing processed, getting away from um, you know, dairy and gluten and other things that are um, high in the glycemic index just to make sure that we're not feeding the cancer. Food. So um, it's, it's been eye-opening and really inspiring. I love having a group. Sounds really cool. It is. <laughs> if you were to switch jobs, which career would you choose? Well, I went to school for communications. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know what I would do if I were to switch jobs. I really, I love what I do. I would probably do something um, in training in a corporate environment, um, maybe around food. Or I've done some consulting. And, something like that around food, food service. I mean, just because I, I really like what I do. I like this industry. That's cool. It's a little bit crazy, but I enjoy it a lot. Um, I would totally do TV in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's silly. Because it's just it's fun, and it's dynamic, yeah. the people that work in it are really interesting and, and a fun group. And I did TV on the other side of the camera, you know, behind the camera before. Yeah. And, and I love that. It's great. So, I would do that. <laughs> well, awesome. So, I'm, I'm not a chef uh, in terms of having culinary training, but I do love to cook, and I spent three years cooking commercially. So, I cooked here in the restaurant for three years as the main cook, as the lead cook here. So, I you know, learned on the job, and I can cook a line like nobody's business now. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy in there, though. I mean, I'm very happy not to have to cook. You know, that I it, it's not something that I'm required to do now because I have this great staff and they can do it. But it also means that I have an intimate understanding of what it takes to do their job so that I can help them and you know, make sure that they're doing everything they need to in order to be successful for the day and to make sure our team is successful. So um, I'm glad to have had that experience. And I, sometimes I think about going to culinary school, but there's so much information out there now that you can really um, teach yourself. You can get your own education if you read the right books and you have opportunities to have exposure, you know, learn knife skills and learn how to saute and learn what it's like to, you know, cook in a commercial environment. I think you can do so much just getting in there and doing it yourself. And, um, I grew up in a house where cooking is just what we did. It's yeah. cooked all the time. We cooked as a family and having all the restaurant background in my family meant that there was always good cooking going. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm not 800 pounds. <laughs> so that's a follow-up question. How do you stay fit when you're around all yeah. this food? Oh. <laughs> um, that's a good one. Um, I, you know, it's hard to stay fit around all this food, and I haven't always. I'm actually um, working on my fitness now, especially having, um, like I said, been a dancer before. I had a dancer's body. I was at the, the height of fitness. Um, I think I had like 12%, not even 12%, I had 10% body fat. It was wow. ridiculous. But that's what happens when you dance 30 hours a week, you know what I mean? And that's your job. <laughs> um, so now I really, like I said, I, I focus on whole foods. I focus on making sure that um, that we're eating regularly. So many people think like, oh, I shouldn't you know, eat too much or I'm going to skip a meal. The key factor is eating all the time. So, um, and keeping your metabolism going. So I make sure I eat you know, every three to four hours instead of getting too busy to eat. I really focus on making sure I get a meal in. Um, and then I started working out again because I have been um, unfit for the last few years since I had my daughter. I was ginormous when I was pregnant with her. <laughs> and um, like four sizes bigger than I am now. Bigger, yeah, huge. So, <laughs> um, you know, now we're, we're really working on this, this whole idea of wellness, I think is the best way to put it in our family. And so my husband and I have been working out together, and that's nice. And the kids too, which I think is hilarious. Wahoo!